we would like to welcome you to the Better Cribs and Gardens channel. If you have been looking for information on how to start living off the grid with no money, we have our top 3 compilation videos that we have researched and want to present to you. Also, we have provided the information to their different YouTube channels. Make sure that you visit them. Please don't copyright strike us, this is to inform, educate and entertain our audience. But first off there are links at the bottom in the description of this video that will take you to the official page that you see here, if you are looking for the self-sufficient backyard, official website, for getting off the grid and turning your home into a self-sufficient homestead and more information as well, that is also featured in the beginning and at the end of the video. And you can see that this featured information is said to be the only book you need to become self-sufficient on one quarter acres. Just take a look as we briefly scroll. Also take a look here, as you can see that there is a video featured on the official page that should be able to show more information and help you to understand better. Also, take a look here as it says that this is said to contain 40 years of experience living off the grid and is said to help you to turn your home into a self-sufficient homestead. Just take a look as we briefly scroll through. If you would like to take a look at the featured self-sufficient backyard, official website, for getting off the grid and turning your home into a self-sufficient homestead and more information for yourself, all that you have to do is just click on the links provided in this description. Just briefly take a look here as we scroll. But now, let's get to our selection of videos that we have researched for how to start living off the grid with no money. We hope that you will enjoy it. Where we research the videos from. Video number 1, is from the, Tiny Home Tours, YouTube channel. Video number 2, is from the, Stony Ridge Farmer, YouTube channel. Video number 3, is from the, Van Wives, YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm pregnant. I'm so pregnant. More pregnant than I think I am, I think. And I'm living out here with my husband and my two-year-old son with the... The dog. The dog. I was going to say no running water and no electricity, except for we have solar panels. And technically the spring is running, so... Um, but we're definitely off the road, so I think that counts as off the grid. This is the new porch. The new porch it's is glorious. I love it. We can hang out here and not get wet in the rain. The fall rain is coming, so it's like a place that Kai and I can go. I can put him out here when he's screaming, which is excellent. The house is pretty small, and when he has meetings, you know, he's working online. Frankie, so it's, it's, like a, it's like a whole extra room to the house now. And I built it for, to be fairly grandiose. Um, mm. I wanted to make a statement. <laughs> this is your statement piece. <laughs> I think the door is your statement piece. We worked. This is what we've worked the hardest on. Yeah, this is new. This is fancy. It has a latch on it. Love that sound. So this house was basically built by one person. Normally, you get a team of people and you place sill logs and you stack them up. But the stockading here, that's the logs that run up and down, make it possible for one person to kind of do this on their own. So it's a pretty unique style. You won't see cabins like this. Yeah, most um, log cabins had the, the horizontal, horizontal locks. Horizontal locks. So, it's special, but it comes with its own set of um, issues. It Every has single its, thing has, has a story. story. Right, so this is, this is the just-in-case shit. Right, it's <laughs> like insurance. This is the artifact of having a two-year-old in the woods. So, uh, that's Kai's chariot, back and forth, two hours each way. I climbed Nolly the first time in 2001 with these snowshoes that are probably... 50 years old, and we were the retro guys. Every time we would get into camp, they'd be like, you guys are the retro guys. I was with, with Rick, you know, my stepdad. So we had these bunny boot crampons, and these snowshoes, and, and bunny boots, which are which are total old school gear, right? Everybody's they're got Korean now. Korean War vintage yeah. army surplus, which they're the best though. It, it was exactly the right thing to climb the mountain in 1976, and we climbed in 2001, and <laughs> had all the same gear, and like literally, the, like we were known up and down the mountains, like, you guys are the retro guys. It's like, no, we're the shitty gear guys, dude. We're the guys that can't afford the plastic boots. So that's the shrine to the days of yore. Because we don't see family that often, we keep, you know, for my son, like, all the aunties and the grandmas and the grandpas, and we've got all the regular kid stuff books, and, but then we also have special stuff, the lead star that we have to keep up really high now that we have a two-year-old around. That's, but, that is hilarious. So, so my brother, grew up out here. yeah, my brother and I had a, a stump where we would, we would put targets and we'd do 22. Practice. Yeah, shoot, 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 shoot 22s for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. To the point where you could go in with a pocket knife and dig out bullets, except they weren't bullets, they were like a bullet amalgams, because there was just like the stump itself was basically lead. So we dug up all of the old lead bullets and and Rick cut a form into a piece of wood and we poured a lead 
I know. Mean, okay, you guys are... Yeah, so this will this will make you talk funny, but it's cool. It is. All the stuff. Every, everything has a story. Everything you know? ha like that. Everything. Every single thing. Like this picture. You know, from 1982. From 1982, yeah. And it's been hanging there since 1982, right? Like, I don't know what's behind there. There could be holes that, you know, mice come in. And Guys, toys, up. although half of those toys are my toys. That's a cool thing. I mean, I feel like you don't really get that anymore. You know, people growing up in the same house that, or having, you know, having your kids in the same house that you grew up in. Like, these are literally, this is Uncle Forrest Chainsaw. Uncle Forrest got this when he was five years old, 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. now, now Kai thinks it's the coolest thing in the world and runs around and helps me, you know, build a little cabin with his toy chainsaw. So yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, all of this stuff is pretty Yeah, that's, that's Uncle Forrest. Yeah, all of this stuff is pretty old. Like Duplos, the original Duplo bunny. That's pretty sweet. Original micro machines. They're pretty cool. This yeah. is my domain. Sometimes, you know, Feels like they live here, right here specifically. Um, we cook all of our meals here. There's no takeout. No one's to deliver us pizza. Oh, I wish they would. It would be really awesome. It's Amazon someday with the drones. Yes, everybody keeps asking about the Amazon drone delivery service, and I'm all about that. I support that program. <laughs> I mean, when we get even when we get into town, it's you know if we're like on a mission, we're going to the grocery store because it's a you know, it's a two hour hike out and then back. So you've got four hours of just the trail, then it's another two hours down to town and back. So that's another four hours. So it's an eight hour round trip before you even do anything. So Basically everything is a mission, right? <laughs> so it's like, it's very rare that you have the time, to, leisure be, time. to be not on a mission. Basically you're begging, borrowing time from a friend. It's like, can you watch my kid and then can I also please stay overnight on your couch except for now we have a kid so it's not like couch do you have a spare bedroom that we can use you know um, that's a, a something that's we do have friends in town they do let us do that but you're not doing it every week you're not doing it every month it's a special occasion kind of thing so let's talk about all the fancy that we got. oh we made so fancy here yeah so there's a lot of there's been a lot of upgrades um, since we moved in one of the things that I found special about living here was walking into the house and having and really feeling like you were walking back in time. It felt like that. You had the old cook stove, and there was, you know, it, I, mean, I guess we had plastic buckets, but really, other than that, there was sort of no. You guys had like lanterns, kerosene lanterns and stuff when you first moved back here. Yeah, part of it is is feels like just totally right because it's the necessity of um, you know what it takes to be able to live here for us. So, for example, I have to have a fairly elaborate solar setup because I have to have power, because I have to have the computer, because I have to, I have to log on. So if I'm going to have all that, running these LED Christmas lights is like, it costs it's nothing, free. right? It's free, yeah. right? So all of the lights that you see are, are new in the last two years. And it's funny to me, sometimes I'll turn off all the lights and I'll turn off the one single light that we used to have over in the corner over there. And... Just to just to realize, I mean, it wasn't even that long ago, right? It's not. We're not talking thirty years ago. We're talking like three years ago that this house that was like as bright as you could get it, you know. And it's it's crazy to to feel. That's one of those things where um, you don't. There's there's certain things about being here that are, that are really different than being on a, in a conventional house. And lighting, as funny as it sounds, is one of the big ones. Where it's the winter. And it's dark, you know, basically the sun rises at 10 and sets at 2, and it's dark all the time. And when you really can't make your house light, you know, you turn on the light and there's like this one little pool in the corner and everything else is still dark, it really feels like winter is just forever. And that, But you turn on these Christmas lights, and even though the, the lighting is still pretty mellow compared to a conventional house, it's like, now we can see nice. and do the dishes, and there's been some upgrades like that, which, which is, it's a, you know, it's a push and pull for me because it's nice to have that. And at the same time, it's it seems antithetical to the rustic. The, the rustic, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of caught making these the roughing it. Yeah. Not out here to rough it, honey. Yeah, we're out here to smooth it. it. Yeah. yeah. Who's cool is that? Rex. That's Rex. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the the track lighting up here is new. The Christmas lights that run around the house are new. This is um, my Christmas present last year. There used to be this, a cook stove, literally, right here. So that stove, believe it or that's not... That's new, too. That's like a super fancy stove. That's like a $3,000 stove. Um, it's a, It's got a Cadillac reburner, and it's like super fancy, top of the line, like 89% efficient or something stupid. Well, yeah, the old cook stove, it would, when it backed up, it would get super smoky in here. And I was like, I have a two-month-old. I'm not bringing a two-month-old into a smoky, sooty environment, right? That's not... 
what a good mom does. So, and, and, you know, who wants to be cold? And this, this had been a pretty drafty cold place to live. So the first week, the first time when we first moved out here, that was the one, that was the first thing. The second thing was the washing machine. I needed a washing machine. And this, this was just last year. And those are the, probably the, for me, the three biggest yeah, the, the, life changers. Like the, really life changers out here. The process of getting these things out here is is real, right? Like, so the old it, it's it's funny actually. So nothing that we've brought out is is bigger than the old cook stove. And then the old cook stove came out in 1982 on a dog sled. Yeah, and was dropped three times, and the fire brick was cracked, and you know is it a thing. But yeah, bringing this thing out, it's actually it's not as hard as you would think. It's just. It, it's you got to put it on the snow machine. You strap it down and hope for the best, and then like avoid all the trees. Basically, is, is the process. It is a real deal when like when you're thinking about what you're going to bring back. It's like, well, is that going to fit on the sled, and how is that going to work? And it's it's a totally well. And if you want it in June, you just have to wait until it, there's enough snow. Which last year it wasn't until Christmas. Yeah, we had plans to buy this stove months before it actually came out here, right? Because 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 of that. Um, and, yeah, waiting for the snow. Right, and there's, you know, the stove is one thing, like obviously I'm not going to put this 150 pound stove on my back, but but even just the stuff, we redid the counter last year, and just these these 2x12s, like, Heavy I guess I probably could have made an extra trip and brought the 2x12s, but really it's the kind of thing that you do when it snows. So you, you definitely like plan life based on the weather, which is kind of cool. You know, the trail is, is miles, and it is not passable on an ATV. It's a footpath. It's like a game trail, and it goes. The reason is we can't have ATV is because it goes over creeks and over sloughs and over tundra, which is pretty tough terrain to um, put any kind of trail. And walking is difficult. So not only are you walking so far, but you you know carrying all of your produce in the summer. Um, you don't want to have any extra weight to that. So if you're already and Kai is not getting any lighter. You know I think he's like 35 pounds now. So, and then you add all your groceries to that, and you each, we each have a pack. And that's the problem with this. I can't do a pack anymore. So this summer it's been lean, bringing stuff in and sending Chris out on solo missions. And So I really did, don't get into town. When you ask that question, I'm like, into town? I can't remember the last time I saw other people, <laughs> you know, which is a weird thing to say, right? We're in some ways so connected, having the Internet access back here. In other ways, it's just... Yeah. The human contact, like the actual physical contact is... Um, That's one of the things I think about all the time. Like, so I have instantaneous feedback. When <laughs> this house was built in 1982, Rick walked out here and there was no cell phone, there was no internet, there was no anything. There was right? radio there, and he... No, no, but there wasn't when he got back here. I mean, there there was the radio, like the FM radio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but he you know would walk out to the post office, get a letter, walk back, be here for a month, and then send that letter, and then it would take two weeks to get there. It was like the the communication Slow. cycle was so different, right? And now it's just like everything's happening, and it feels so twenty first century to me. As funny as that sounds, to be out here and just have all that communication running back and forth, and it's such a different vibe than it ever used to be. It is weird because in some ways it's a total throwback, you know, without the running water and being on our own electric system and whatever. Yeah, that's all old, but in other ways it's, it's the same as anywhere else. So this is our, um, I'm going to say sink. And it's funny, the other day I asked Kai to bring a dish to the sink. He's like, where's the sink? I'm like, oh, the dish pan. It's, a, it's a, you know, here's our dirty dishes. You know, I'll heat up whatever was the biggest pan that I cooked in, you know, put the water on there and I'll wash the dishes dry the dishes, put them away, which is totally normal, except, you know, people talk about dishwashers are so water efficient, and it's so ironic that we have more water than we could ever use up here, and at the same time, because we're hauling it by hand, we use so little. This is our um, our dump bucket, and it's a five-gallon bucket, that's where all of our, you know, vegetable yeah, peelings, compost, the drain, the drain, exactly. So I know that when I do dishes, I use less than five gallons of water. Right. Lot. By a like, lot. Like a, you might use yeah. half a gallon. So people make this argument like, oh, the dishwasher saves so much water. I'm like, yeah, but you could do dishes with less water. Hand washing is another thing that just gets difficult with the two you and your wash your hands. You, you know, soap up his hands and make him hold them over the bucket and you're rinsing them just with a little cup you know, of water. Oh, this is vintage. 
This is our hand washing cup. Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury Doughboy, man. <laughs> I'm just 35 years this old. This is an antique, I'm sure, but we use it every day, every day. So here's our washer. Um, how it's it's an awesome dryer, it's like large capacity, which is great because we only do about one load a week. Two if it rains, and we have the extra water. But on the back side here, we have two large like Rubbermaid tubs, one full of water for our intake and one for our discharge. So basically, we just drop the hoses in the tub sucks it up, washes and you know, rinses, spits it back out. And then that water we actually haul out by hand, dump it out in the yard, um, biodegradable soap, because it's, it's interesting, we always worrying about contaminating our spring because that is our only drinking water source. It's the reason why we hike our water over here and dump it, so that's on the drainage back away from the spring. Same reason why we don't ever move our outhouse because who wants to contaminate, you know, you never, you don't really, we don't really know what the drainage system is like down there. We don't want to contaminate it because that is what really keeps us alive out here. Yeah, the spring is. Absolutely it's amazing. It's a magical spring. spring. Yeah. 40 below, it's still running. Um, summertime, 80 degrees out, it's still like 33 degrees. The summer, the summer before my first year in college, um, Rick and I decided we were going to finish the room that was started in 1993. I graduated from high school in 98, so it was five years, I guess. It sounds not as long as it felt, but um, this was going to be my little brother's room, um, except by the time it actually got finished, he was not living here anymore. When we go look at the little cabin, we'll talk about it, but um, we ended up pulling out all of this shit from the little cabin, and this has turned into kind of like the pantry. It's, it's Kai's bathroom. It's, it's, it's like random stuff. There's a lot that's been going on between getting ourselves up here and having, you know, being pregnant and having Kai be two years old and just trying to like And you're working full time. Yeah, working full time and trying to arrest the decay. Like I've rebuilt the sauna, the outhouse, the little cabin, the front porch, and we rebuilt that place in the last three years. There's a lot that still needs to get done. There's no architectural design. There's no you know, building code. No one's no, coming out here to check us. It's definitely not to code. <laughs> not to code. It's not five star energy rated. But, but whatever you want to do, dream big, right? Whatever you want to do, whatever you can do, you, you can do it. Which is really fun. And I swear, if I, if I didn't have kids and I could just do projects all the time, oh, happy as a clam. You know, it's, it's, it is super fun. And it's cool when you look at the wood and you're like, I remember that tree as a tree. And I remember peeling that tree. And I remember, you know, I didn't spike it in, but I remember Christopher spiking that in. <laughs> but it's, it's really... A cool feeling especially I love going over to our guest cabin because like we built that we from the ground up we picked the spot we did everything frankly this bookshelf is not really ideal let's be honest um, yeah stuff tends to fall off of it when the door closes but because you have to slam the door to get it to close yeah but Rick built this bookshelf he built the chairs 37 years ago built the table it hasn't moved <laughs> Neither have the books. <laughs> no. You look at the top of them, you can tell. <laughs> it's the fact that we have encyclopedias. Right, yeah, we even have. Even though the, we have the we, whole internet. I, I told Forrest that we need to get rid of these because we have all the information in the world in our pocket. Forrest really likes to look stuff up in books. P is just a case the internet fails, we'll still know stuff. <laughs> <laughs> from what? From 1982? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, those are 76. Forrest was born out here. Um, Forrest, was, Forrest is 10 years younger than I am, um, so there's three of us brothers that, that grew up out here, um, Forrest being the youngest. Forrest was born in 1990, um, there. about 15 feet that direction. Um, he was born two weeks early before the midwife got here, so my mom was out here on her own. Uh, with, Can't even imagine. With Rick. <laughs> um, it all, all worked out, I guess. <laughs> Yep, he did not die, if you recall. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he did not die, and she did not die. Um, although it was a good thing Crazy that times. nothing too complicated happened. Wait, Forrest, so Forrest has kind of followed in Rick's footsteps, and... Um, that's the book here? That's his, that's his book. So Forrest has written his book. Rick wrote a book about getting... Rick wrote two books, actually, here, uh, about, uh, about what it's like to be out here and kind of the story of getting here and that whole deal. Um, so we've got two authors in the family, so we have a lot of books, and even though, like I said, I'm, I'm a total Philistine and, and happy on YouTube, we have, we have books, so maybe Kyle will read. 
you can be a crazy kind of kid yeah. that reads books. Yeah, I, I can't. Might not play video games. It's going to be a real weirdo. <laughs> So the, the table. table was Michelle's dream. Yeah. The black lacquer. Rick, French Rick, so that yeah, this, this is worth talking about. So Rick, Rick came out here in 1982 from Chicago with from a... From Manhattan. Yeah, no, you're right. From Manhattan. Growing up in Chicago from Manhattan with with a, a couple dreams. And there I mean, a dream. And there was a couple of items in the dream that were just like touch points. And one of the things was we're going to have a black lacquer table, right? It was like 1982. She wanted, she wanted pink... And gray cups with black lacquer. That's so 80s, right? Yeah. And we still have this stuff. It's like right. Yeah. So these these cups were brought out here probably uh, in a backpack in 1982, and they've been out here ever since. This is the black lacquer table that that, that probably did not sort of come out as imagined. Yeah, it's pretty rough. <laughs> I don't know if you'll pick this up on camera, but it's the lacquer is pitted, the seams are cracked, and it's so low on the priority of things to get fixed and changed and it, everything's sentimental like we've been saying like every time you pick up a thing or look at a thing like oh you know we don't you know remember that story um like the post over here is a good example yeah They're, let's look at the posts the posts are pretty cool i love looking at the posts because yeah, so they are, measure the heights of the boys this is this is brother one this is me brother two brother three is on the other side so that's the three brothers growing up from my first mark is right here in 87. And, and Kai's down here. Yeah. His first mark when he was two months old. Is um, this is Uncle Ka's first mark in 85. Forrest's first mark is like down here in 1990. And then this is my son is down here first mark in 2015. And I just think that's rad. These posts are like history. Um, They're really fun. So it's cool. It's cool. I was, I was, that, I was that tall. I got here. <laughs> I keep, we've done a bunch of these building projects and you do the building in the summer because that's when it's happening and inevitably you brought in 90% 90, 90 of the lumber that you needed, right? Which is not minor, you know, to go get, to figure out, like the building project is happening. It's not like you're going to wait until the winter time. So you got to go bring that in your back and you probably forgot a window or two, which is kind of mind blowing, right? You should be able to calculate that beforehand. But anyway, so we brought this window in. In the summer. This is in the summer. So, I, yeah, so, I'm so carried, this is carried in. On carried in, in on my back. I've done the trail. I'm exhausted. I'm feeling pretty good. Finally got the window in. I, I pull my backpack off, lay right it on by the floor, the porch. and I just hear... <laughs> <laughs> so there's so it's a double pane glass window. Amanda did this cool, like... Cover-up job. Yeah, but if, if you ch check it out, that's... Duct tape on the back side of it. on the back side, right? Cause, um, and someday... Maybe we'll replace it, but really, probably, but really, probably like, really it's one of those things. Like everything, it works just good enough. Yeah. Like it, you know. And it'll be the kind of thing that we won't replace, and then Kyle will be like, "Oh, but my mom did that painting." Well, let's just leave it. You know, stuff like or, that. Or that that's half of half the time. It's like, "Oh, my mom did that painting. I don't want to move it." The other half the time is like, "What the fuck is the matter with these guys?" This, like, really, this window's been broken for 35 years, and these guys couldn't bother to be freaking bring out another window? What the hell is the matter with these people? Which is, like I said, half the time I walk around here, I'm like, oh man, that black lacquer table, that thing is 35 years old. There's a lot of stories, a lot of good times around that table. And the other half of the time, I'm just like, how come I've got black visqueen sitting on my ceiling? <laughs> Maybe we should fix that. Kind of like the couch that's vintage, man. That couch was brought out here, it, yeah. Early 80s, and you could, and it was bought used because Rick did not have a lot of money, so he got that thing used, and it's been here since the 80s. And Christian, we were just talking about this, like, when did you first start putting this together? It's like nails holding that thing up, nails upon nails upon nails. I remember being 12 years old, the the arm on the couch was broken, like you could lean against it, and it would just kind of fall over. And I remember coming in here with a, a hammer and an eight penny nail, and just banging it in, and that was in 1992. <laughs> So we'll Love look, that couch. Yeah. A lot of good memories. <laughs> we'll replace that couch someday. I don't even want to now that the dog's here. Like The dog sleeps there. It's perfect for him. If you had a new couch, you'd have to kick the dog off. It, it all works out. This is the upstairs of the house. It's a, um, an unfortunate design. <laughs> um, we've got these, these three dormer windows that face north and then these big ridge poles that run down. So you have to duck under at the bottom. And of course we've got bookshelves and crap so you can't actually walk through in the middle where you wouldn't have to duck under. So we spent a lot of time ducking under. But this is 
This is the power area. It's also a total embarrassment. I just want to say for the record, this is like not my, not my best work. Charge controller, two inverters. This bigger one is for the washing machine, which is their only real load. Um, this is basically for my computer. Lights. I, I, there's not much in terms of load. It's basically my computer, the satellite dish, the washing or the yeah the washing machine every once in a while, and the lights, which are all LED and and don't use much. So um, the batteries are under here. We've got just I think it's it's we've got two 400 amp hour six six volt batteries. So we've got 12 volts at 400 amp hours. Um, there's uh, I want to say 750 watts of solar outside. The interesting thing about the solar is we have way too much all year until about, I would say, like the middle of October to, towards the 1st of November. And then like October 15th, somewhere between October 15th and November 1st, it's like now there's nothing at all. So you could quadruple the array and, and nothing times four is still nothing, right? So it's kind of funny that way. So we run the generator um, every couple days and from about November through February. But and other, other than November through February, we're totally on our own. We've just got a little Honda E2000. Um, just, it just, this is an inverter charger. I run it for about three hours uh, every other day, and that's enough. So we've got the, the blackout shades that we'll take off here pretty soon, actually. But, um, yeah. you know, from, I want to say, mm, mm, April? April. April through about October. the end of, yeah. end of August, yeah. beginning of September, it's like you kind of you want to sleep helps, well because you've got nothing but sun. Well, with well, Rick a Rick, writer and Rick Forrest was an writer, author, and... yeah, and Forrest is an author. I, my family is very cerebral. I just I just watch videos. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we don't have TV, and uh, books are great. Um, we've got a lot of them out here, and because you know. Um, and not all of them are the best, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to when Kai can read a little, when we can read to him, you know, those classic you know, books that would be fun. Yeah. Reading it, Rick's book to him will be a trip. That'll be really I'm fun. excited about that. Little yeah. Tree will be awesome. Oh, yeah. This is my I office. I that for Krista. Oh, because I had I just couldn't stand the idea of a regular office chair being out here, even though it would be more comfortable. And if you told me you needed it, I would totally let you, but this looks so much better than a swivelly office chair. <laughs> so it's, it's not the Herman Miller Aaron chair. No, it's not. But no. but I really I I like making the stuff and this birch. So we cut down birch for firewood, right? Um, and as long as the wood is green you can bend it and uh, just cut it to fit. I nail it together. It's really fun. Um, that's another one of those things like, oh, I can make furniture. It's, uh, so yeah, I made this chair. I made Kai's high chair little end tables. I have big dreams of, um, I don't know, making coffee table for the guest cabin and uh, there's a few other things, like the basket and stuff that's over there. So I'm a software developer. I do a lot of, I write code. So I've got my, my split screens. And I want you to make sure that you capture this. This is where I get all my really good ideas. <clears throat> so I, I do a lot of a lot of big thinking up here, and um, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. So feel yeah. feel pretty good about it. This is this is where I spend 40 hours a week or so. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's a really weird feeling. It's the weirdest dichotomy in the world when when I close that. Uh, it's like it's it's a, it's a moment that happens right it's like san diego stops boom now i'm in the wilderness right it's like this bizarre feeling and it's really cool um, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i wander downstairs and i'm in this like kind of like primal deal where i've got my pregnant wife and my two-year-old son in this log cabin in the wilderness versus you know like you said Twitter and internet and JavaScript and blah blah blah. Yeah, it is different for me. It's it's interesting that your life is so much different out here than mine. Just just because he's going to work, yeah. um, I feel like there'll be days where I literally don't talk to anyone except for these two. Um, more than days, like it's it's been like a week, you know, because that guy keeps me busy. Like having a phone call where you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And you got your kid and. You've got dinner and you only have two hands. Your cell phones are not made for this. Just the fact that you're talking about phones, though, is like it, that's a whole new reality yeah. out here. Yeah, right? um, for sure.
That's that's fancy pants for us. And that's actually new in the last two years too. We didn't have cell phones that worked out here, but we've found okay. the right provider and we got the cell phone booster and it's like like you said, it's yeah. it's this weird it's not a hundred years ago. You can't pretend it's a hundred years ago. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> Like I said, I've got about 800 watts of solar, so there's a lot of black back here. I'd love to move it off the porch, but um, I feel really guilty when I start thinking about cutting down the trees. So the, the panels need to be up as high as possible and facing south. So I'm up and I'm south, and I've got a clearing right here. So if I was going to like put them in the yard or something, they'd be way farther down, and I'd have to start cutting down trees. So right, right now they're in the back porch. Yeah, well, it's, it's, back porch has other improvements that yeah, probably should be dealt with first. There's a lot of stuff that's going on, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. <laughs> I'm going to redo the back porch. These will go. But for now, um, this is this is my um, poor man's solar array, uh, yeah. well, which is to say our, they're um, leaning up against the side of that one. Dish. It's so ugly. This is but crazy shit, dude. This is real right here. We got ones and zeros that are streaming out from here into outer space down to San Diego, back out here to the Alaskan wilderness, and, and that's how I'm making money. That's crazy. I, I can't believe that's happening. But that's real, dude. That's that's real. And it's strapped to the side of this log cabin that was built in 1982, and yes. when, when this place was nowhere. And it's, it's still, still kind of nowhere. nowhere. It's still nowhere. We got the cell antenna back there, which is, like I said, that's a new reality, too. People call the phone rings. It's wild. It's pretty wild. Oh, on this rug. This rug is hilarious. Can you tell the story about this rug? Yeah, this is a it. nice rug. Like, for the ridge line, it's really fancy. Apparently, Rick had gone to town. So he would go on binge um, money-making spree. So he was a, a ta taxi driver or something, whatever. Found a guy's wallet. <laughs> and this was back when credit cards were, like, brand new. So he went and bought this rug and then returned the guy's wallet to him. <laughs> what? Well, he found the guy's wallet, bought the rug on the guy's credit card, and then returned it to... The guy's wallet. <laughs> so anyway, it's there, that's our stolen rug. It's hot. It's a hot rug. It's a hot rug. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's the only way that, that, that's probably one of the fanciest things out here. The story is, for me is how he did this with no money. Like, I, I'm doing this with money, right? Like, I have a good job. I have a real job where I make real money. And Rick was out here for real broke, like extra special broke. Um, and, and did all this, and that's just a different way to think about it for me. It's, it's interesting, you know, like, the dichotomy between what I'm doing and what he's doing is really interesting to me, yeah. and I just feel like we're just... We're, we're, cheating. Yeah, we're cheating. We're totally cheating. Modern technology and we a, money. We got a washing machine and batteries. It's like you, you said uh, earlier on the hike and standing on the shoulders of giants. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so the fact that you get here and you can come inside and warm up, like, he got back here and it was 40 below and, yeah, cool. and what? I mean, we've done <laughs> yeah. a lot of work just to insulate the house. Yeah, we yeah. have. We've done a lot. Anyway, well, that's awesome. Probably, that's probably more than you need for a 600 square foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Folks, it's Josh, Darney Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. I have something really cool to share with you. So we've been trying to get off grid here on the farm for probably three years. And today I have found an off grid solution that you're not going to believe. This solar panel, this small solar panel right here has enough power to run my home. It is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna take you through all the details of how to install this, how to hook it up, and how to run your entire home off of one small solar panel. It involves this, and it also involves this right here, this special thing, this special thing in this box. So guys, come along here on the farm vlog today. We're gonna to have a little bit of fun, and we're gonna learn a lot together about how to use this tool and this tool to power your house off grid. It's awesome. All right, let's go have some fun. Woo!
So before we get started today on today's very educational off-grid vlog, this is our first off-grid vlog, okay? It's our first off-grid vlog and it's our first tiny house vlog. That's right, we've decided we're gonna move into a tiny house, guys. So before we even get started with that, I wanna let you know we still have, I think, seven more days available. The Stony Ridge Farmer t-shirts, these are Stony Ridge Farmer limited edition t-shirts. You can get them, they say, I support veteran farmers, or there's one that features the $100 pickup truck. So go to bonfire.com and search Stony, and you'll see it, or there'll be links down below in the video description. You're gonna love this video, it's fantastic. All right, first of all, we gotta start with our parts list, okay? Our parts list includes this solar panel right here, and I'll post a link down below to this solar panel. See the little light that's flashing right there? That means it's ready to use. It's ready to use in your house. It's ready to use in your car. This is designed to help charge your battery in your car. You can plug it into your cigarette lighter. It comes with several different little attachments. Right here they are. Let me show you real quick. Let's get all this crap out. All right, so the attachments are, it, it plugs into this little plug, and then this goes in your cigarette lighter and you can charge your car battery. You can charge your car battery, or you can charge anything that you can plug into a cigarette lighter with it. I'm not sure if you can light a cigarette with it or not. The next thing it comes with are these little pinchers right here, okay? So these little pinchers are, are very, very crucial in putting this thing on and helping us to get off grid. And this little plug also plugs in, and this plug, plugs in to the extremely long cable, which is attached to the solar panel, just like this. Let me show you real quick. Okay, so this plugs, this is going to the solar panel. It's right here, here's all the cords. All right, now here is the cord that goes to the two clips right here. And we'll plug this guy in right here, and I'll show you all this power. <laughs> not, 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 not really. It's plugged in right there, so tech, ooh. That tickles. Uh, technically, we have a charge, and that would be enough to run this house. This box contains the secret to boosting the power of this little tiny solar panel, this tiny, tiny solar panel, to, 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 to run my whole house, to run the whole house. It's amazing. So without further ado, do, do, I'm gonna get everything all plugged up, and I'll show you how it all works, okay? Girl, you be a woman soon. So for this job, we will not need the cigarette lighter or adapter for cigarette lighter. So we don't need that. We also don't need the instructions that come with this. We don't need that at all either. We need this solar panel right here. So we need this solar panel right, 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 right here. And you see it lighting up. That means it's charging. We don't want to short it out. We want to take good care of it because this is what's going to power our house, okay? We're going to take this solar panel and we're going to plug up. Come on, guy. We're gonna plug up our positive and our ne negative terminals here. We're gonna do this very, very carefully, make sure they're not touching, okay? So this is how it's done. You take that and you plug it right in, real slow, real gentle, just like that. And it's plugged in and that's that's the plug-in part. So the next part is the most crucial part. You gotta go down here on the, on the ground and pick this thing up. Part two involves this, okay? I've gotta go get a ha hammer, I'll be right back. All right, here's the hammer. This is the hammer that you need for part two or part three whatever part this is this is what you need for it okay here's the box i'm gonna open it up and take it out the part that we need here okay all right got a snap a little snap on there comes in a bag here's a bag we'll take that bag and we'll, we'll recycle that bag okay we're gonna recycle that bag we're gonna take our second ingredient which is right here in my hand and i'm just going to show you exactly what we're going to do right here on the tailgate of the truck this is very technical so pay attention it it happens really fast it's very technical i promise you this is going to work it's it's been working already we already have one of these installed on our off off, off grid tiny house that's uh it's right back here that's our right right, right there that's our other off grid tiny house we call it a shed and that, that's where we live uh, when we're not living in our other tiny house. We, 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 we call that the shed. That's where a lot of screws and nuts and bolts are kept. It's our tiny house. That's our big truck beside our tiny house. Guys, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time to the channel, if you're enjoying this, if you like this content, if you find value in it, please click the thumbs up. Click, 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 click the like button. Help support the channel, okay? Buy yourself a t-shirt. Be a man. This is a man shirt. Be a woman. It's a woman's shirt. It can be a kid's shirt. It can be anybody's shirt, 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 shirt that it wants to be. Second ingredient is right here in my hand. Let me show you exactly what we need to do. We're going to use our tool that we just bought on Amazon right here to solve this entire on the grid problem. We're going off grid right, 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 right now. Get ready. Here goes. 
right there. Right there it is, okay? Secret ingredient, you gotta keep this part wet right here, okay? So keep that wet. We're gonna flip it over so as to protect it. We're gonna like stick it on the on the metal right here, okay? I'll show you. This part right here, it goes down, just like, like, like that. Part two is right here, okay? You get your hammer, you gotta put that nail in. You gotta be firm with it, okay? Right here, this is the nail that we're gonna use, okay? I'll post a link, link, link down below. Tap, tap, tap that nail in. Just like that, right there is it. Now we're gonna take our solar panel. I had to get the camera back a little ways because I'm afraid it may spark as soon as I hook it up. First thing we gotta do, so we got our clips, we got our solar panel here, and we gotta make sure when we plug it up that it's flipped over, that the sun cannot get to it, that God's light cannot shine upon this because it will explode. First we're gonna hook up the negative. I'll show you real close. And then we're gonna hook up the positive. And just be really, really, really careful, okay? We're gonna take this back to the electrical panel, the main electrical panel in the house. Show you exactly what to do. Exactly what to do. Let's take it on back. This must be facing southward, okay? Right here, this, this is a, a power inductor. You wanna take your power inductor and you're gonna put it right on the top of your panel. You gotta be careful, okay? And then this should be facing southward, okay? That's right, it goes right there. Okay, that's due south, that's facing due, 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 due south. Okay, besides the power inducer and the solar panel, this next step is the most important step in going off grid with this solar panel right here, and I'll show you. I'm gonna bring it in a little closer so you can see. Guys, you gotta be careful, there was a wasp in here, a wasp. And wa wa wasps are attracted to off-grid homes and tiny homes, so you gotta be careful. So the next step, the biggest step in this entire thing, first of all, you make sure your inducer, oh, I bumped my head. You're gonna make sure your inducer is absolutely level right here. This conduction point must be on the top of the panel and it must be level. So once it's level, then you take your main breaker right here and you turn it on, you click it, oh. Just like that. Did you see the panel jump? Because so much electricity came blasting out of here that the panel actually fell down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are officially off grid on one single electrical panel. I'm gonna tell you right now that this entire video is a crock, 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 crock. And I hope you guys had fun. So many people are doing this off grid thing. So many people are doing this tiny house thing. So many people are just trying to live a good clean life. And I thought I'd just take you along with me and have a little bit of fun today. Show you something that was just absolutely silly. To me, living in a tiny house, there's just no way I could do it here on the farm, guys. We have too much equipment. We have too many things to maintain. We have to have our shop here. We have to have big tools. We have to have big toys. We have to have big trucks and we have to have big equipment. So we can't live in a tiny house. You just don't have room to even put a socket set down somewhere. So guys, what we have to do is live a good clean life and do the best you can and save all the energy you can. Try to live right. And what we're gonna do here on the farm is we're gonna raise grass fed beef and organic pasture raised chickens. Thanks a lot for watching guys. If this is your first time, click the like button. Guys, for goodness sake, leave a comment down there. Tell me what you think. I know this is silly. It's just about having fun and being on the farm and living in the country. There's my dogs, here's me. If you like Stony Ridge Farmer and you wanna support a veteran farmer, buy yourself a t-shirt. This is just a little fun video. Thanks a lot guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm for something real, not something silly and fake. All right? You come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife and bring your kids who live in life, pure and sweet, that's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Get in the grass. Get in the grass. Sit. Sit down. Lex, sit. 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 Lex, sit. Good girl. Stay, stay, stay free. We've been waiting three months for this to arrive. Now we can begin creating our off-grid electrical system. We're trenching 800 feet of conduit into the ground around the cabin. These are the beginning steps that will turn our 15 acres into a sustainable homestead. That's the sound you want to wake up to. <laughs> Is it really happening? I can't believe this. We've been waiting three months for this. Look at our porch. Look at everything. Now everything's gonna have a home. 
We're gonna have a space that's going to transform our life at the cabin. No more living with tools, a place to do projects and to work away, store materials. It's gonna make things so much smoother. But <laughs> first problem is getting in our driveway. <laughs> I think it's coming in the driveway, but it's just so close. We've taken down four trees at the mouth of the driveway to try and get it in. We definitely ordered a big building. <laughs> I truly can't believe this is actually happening. We almost have it straight in the driveway. And this was actually the first project we started prepping for when we got back to the cabin this spring. And that's because it was supposed to be here in one month. And it is the start of when we can actually do the inside of our cabin build because this is the home to our off-grid electrical system. They also just lost one of the chains on the, the secondary wheels that move it side to side. They're no longer working with two wheels in between the regular wheel set. They're only working with one. It's broken. I don't know why and I don't know how, but I don't think it's too good. Do you drink coffee? No problem. They don't know they're missing out on the Krista Barista. <laughs> we literally haven't even had coffee yet, everyone. Oh, I'm so excited though. I like. I'm in disbelief to be honest. Think about how amazing this space is going to be all winter. It's it's the house to our electrical. Like we're going to be able to do things. It's the next step for so many things. So great. It's so surreal. I don't feel like it's real. Coffee's ready, their engine's on. Luckily they give you four hours for delivery because they tend to be a little bit tricky everywhere they go. They got it! They got it? Woo! Oh, they're so good. A success, they finally got in the driveway. It took about 45 minutes at least, but now we're smooth sailing coming down. Hopefully for the rest of the way. saying they usually deliver four a day. Not today. <laughs> Not today. Good thing shipping's included at the first bill, eh? <laughs> Honestly though, we're gonna have to give them a tip because That's they have just been so good. Like going out of their way. Like someone could have looked at this and said, not doing it. See you later ladies. I'm yeah. on to the next job. driveway and they're literally on the last turn to get it in its forever home. The shed garage thing is completely straight and I believe now is the time where they use the slider on the trailer and they're gonna just slide it right back. All the turns have been completed. Wow. Zeus and his co-worker are literally crushing it. building it's freaking built oh my gosh so well by this the Mennonite. it's so surreal are you crying it's so surreal it like is. this doubles our space this makes everything so much easier going forward we have a garage can you believe that no i can't believe that <laughs> oh i'm so happy they did such an amazing job I'm thank so you come see your other dog house Okay. You miss mama? You guys were good girls. Girls, good girl. guess what? We have a new garage. Whoa. Open the other oh one. Oh my goodness. Come on in. Wow. <laughs> it's huge. Wow. <laughs> I absolutely cannot believe the amount of space in here. It's amazing. It's tall too, hey? We have a garage. I, 
I cannot get over the space in here. I'm so happy we went with this size and we were so excited that we just started moving things in here so quickly. It's already filled up with all the materials that were taking over the cabin and that were scattered around the property. Quite a few belongings that we've gathered over the last year since moving here. Anyway, I just had to show you everything that we've put in there already and just how we're making use of it right away. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this space in the coming months, especially through the winter. So it's gonna be our little winter workshop. Hey, Porter, how are ya? Guess what? The garage is here. Tomorrow? Six, see you tomorrow. Ten long minutes later. At least. <laughs> this is our map. You ready to follow it? Things happen so quickly out here. All of a sudden, Porter gave us a call and he was here. And now we are doing something very exciting that we've been anticipating for so many months. So everything else goes on hold as per usual and the priorities get taken care of. Heck yeah! Isn't that exciting, eh? Finally. Finally! Finally! Okay, the idea is our electrical system is going to be going in the back. That way, all of the conduit and the boxes are gonna be coming up through this trench and into the hickory barn. Caution tape, measuring tape. If you can read Jasmine spray paint calligraphy, this says trench. Okay, that's aggressive. We don't wanna waste spray paint. Trench! Okay. In between these two lines here, we are going to trench the electrical lines right into the center of the two soon to be existing solar rays. One and two. <laughs> I'm the trench line. This means that we are digging up our precious yard and that includes the sod we laid last year. But we're gonna cut it nicely. This is Porter's idea, he's an absolute genius. And we're gonna strategically put the sod back after and you'll never know anything happened. It's kind of fun, it reminds me of my pogo as a kid. You know? You gotta get you a pogo. Can I get one? That's Where good did you get them? That's good exercise. Does anybody know a pogo maker? Yeah, like do they make them for adults? Sweet, Porter's managed to get around the water line. He's made it all the way past the hickory barn here and he's working his way towards the sod. I'm very impressed, Justin's doing a fantastic job and I just have to say one more thing. I am so happy to see that cat back here. I love an excavator. It just makes me so happy to see it here because when the excavator's here, we're doing some exciting things. This is actually going much faster than I thought and a lot smoother than I thought. Okay, I can't even believe it. We are through the sod, it came out perfectly. That way we can lay it back after this. This yeah. seems like a lot of laps. Well, it is, because well, we have to go from, from there, there to there, to there, 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 to, there, there, to, there, there to there, to there, to there. Yeah, and there, there to, to there, there, and to there, there, to there. <laughs> you catch it? You got it? Yikes. This is conjure queen. <laughs> hey there. Conjure, conjure, conjure. Who is that? Get it. Get it, Bear. Bella. Well, I can't say we, Porter, trenched all the way from the back of this hickory barn to the solar field. It's entirely trenched and ready for the conduit. All that planning we did with Porter that you saw, so many different electrical lines, and even some blank ones for the future. Just kind of future proof, you never know what could happen down the road. No stress, What you doing there, lady? This is an expansion joint. We live in Canada, and this is an expansion joint. <laughs> because we live in Canada, and our ground is constantly moving. So. That's neat. This helps it not rip out of the 
place, I believe Porter taught me. And dirt tastes good, right? Oh my gosh, stop! Just having a snack. Bro, you're literally going ham at it. You're so gross. How many feet are we doing, Porter? 920 feet. Ready to go, everyone? Here we go. And Let's we're starting at, oh, only four o'clock in the point. afternoon. Yeah, but Porter, there's nowhere else you'd rather be working, isn't that true? Nope, none. <laughs> We're the most fun, aren't we? Everyone take a big guess what you uh, need right here. You need a great big smile. Aww. <laughs> and that's why Porter loves working with us. <laughs> no stress, I'm living my life. I'm feeling alright. I'm feeling alright. Those are some skills. Did you even see that? That was so good. <laughs> that is so impressive. Can you imagine trying to no. do that? I wish. Porter needed to jump back into the excavator to dig out some more dirt. So our electrical lines would be flush with the garage. Because we're installing up to six lines on the back of the structure, it's important that they are all perfectly straight. No stress, I'm living my life. I'm feeling alright. I'm feeling alright. We've gone one full length. We've got quite a few more to go, but I'm just celebrating the small wins. We've made it one full length of the first trench. Look at that, one full length. Go team. Go team, go. We're living without electricity. <laughs> and it's September, which means winter is right around the corner. Although we're hopeful that we're going to get our main system installed before winter, we decided to do a little bit of research of something that would be powerful enough and also easy to install for the just in case we don't make it. That's how we came across EcoFlow. This is the Delta Pro with 400 watts of portable solar that we actually mounted on the roof and 4,500 watts output to power heavy duty devices and appliances. The best part is you can customize your setup by connecting them together like regular batteries and that means you can double your power. We can run our 240 volt well pump and all our lights and charge our devices and use our power tools. Toothbrushes, coffee maker, our fridge, our laptop. <laughs> a few of the features that we're already loving is the fast charging capabilities, going from zero to 100% charged in 1.8 hours using an outlet, as well as the ability to use the app to monitor and control our Delta Pro. All right, check out how awesome this is. It's a portable home battery system. It's truly unmatched for its size, all-in-one inverter, solar charge controller, and batteries. We have so much peace of mind knowing we have this at our fingertips. We're super impressed with the technology that EcoFlow has, and if you've been wondering what portable power station you should get, we highly recommend EcoFlow. We love it so much, we even put the panels on our roof. We can't wait to try more of EcoFlow's products. Head to the link in the description so you can see all the portable power stations that EcoFlow has to offer. <laughs> Back to trenching! Line number two. Okay, so we've made it from the hickory barn all the way to the solar array, and we've done that three times. And we've done that three times because, well, one, you need solar to your solar charge controller, because then you need to go back that way and then into the house. There is one blank one just in case one day we want to run something else in the future, and that way we already have the conduit in the ground, so it will be as easy as just fishing the wire through and no more trenching. Right on. No more trenching. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Dinner for Glue Boy and Pipe Girl. Thank ah. you. Dig in. Full day. Full day. <laughs> we'll be back here tomorrow. Yeah. I was cleaning out the yard. Take your boots off. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of trenching electrical lines. Right now, Porter is backfilling our trench that we made last night. And today we're going to be trenching from the garage to the greenhouse. And if we don't chat so much, we can even trench from the solar array to the cabin. Wish us luck. Almost finished filling in the trench. 
but basically these boxes I need something to hold on to and guess what I get to use my torch <laughs> so it's a win-win-win for everything right now if you're new here a couple weeks ago we started experimenting with a traditional Japanese technique charring wood called susugi ban and jasmine absolutely loves it so we are doing that to this post because it's going to be going in the ground and it's going to prolong the life of it what i like most about this is yes traditionally you do it on an open fire but you can easily get one of these torches at your local hardware store a lot of people have a propane tank from their barbecue you hook it up and you can do this so if you're building garden beds at home or you're building like a shed and you want the base of it to be preserved and last longer literally 150 years and then 50 years you re you reburn. I mean like I feel like anyone can do this. Porter just said, you probably have the worst land in all of Nova Scotia. So many rocks, but because there's so many rocks, you have to dig them out. And that's literally why you need this machine out here to do this. And I'm so happy we have Porter's help because this really is a three person job of the digging and laying the pipe and bringing the pipe and all of that. And not only are we trenching, but we've been joined by Talia and Madison and Bowie and we're so, so happy. It's gonna be such a great week. Ah! I have another one. I'll have the pinky. <laughs> this pinky's better. Wow, you love it. Okay. That's so good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's early. It's early. This looks unbelievably delicious. How this do you do the veggies, is the yeah, first of many good meals of these two. Like I'm salivating. Thank you. Thank mm. you, chef. Have fun staying dry. Have fun not staying dry. Thanks. Okay. Well, this is fun. It's coming down harder. It really is. So basically what we did from the garage to the solar field three times last night, we are now doing to the cabin. So we're trying to make the least amount of turns as possible, even though there's lots of turns happening. Anyways, we got the crew, the trenching crew back. We definitely didn't chat too much, but we got rained out. Morning, sweet Izzy. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Morning, Bobby. Bobby say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Got your work boots. Oh my goodness, these are for us. It's time to get to work. Present in your Trenching. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> How do you reckon we're getting this water out of here? Porter? Just gonna drain it into the woods. Yeah? With the bucket? Yeah. Go team. Go team. Go team! Go team! Go team! I'm on vacation. <laughs> Let's go heavy dog. <laughs> okay, so not only did it pour rain last night and kick us off the job site but we have filled up our trench and it is now a moat. Jasmine's gone for a paddle this morning already. We're just enjoying our coffee with our visitors and Porter has a genius idea of making this moat float into the forest and it's slowly draining itself so hopefully that'll get most of the water out of here and our paddleboard is not too happy to hear about that. My river. My river! The trench is being filled in. Thank gosh there's no rain today. And Tal, Bella, kind of Bowie, are even watering the greenhouse for us. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to have extra hands out here. You would literally never know there was a trench here. We have now trenched from the solar field 
to the cabin successfully. Time for a cabin shower. Woo! Okay, we've come back from our cabin shower and we've been told there are all there is a lot of soup obviously due to the rain. This is complete soup. It's all the trenching we can do because the next part of the trenching is going to be from the garage to the greenhouse and we are missing a couple 45s or 90s. Both. We're missing 45 and 90s in order to fin finish it off. We had to use a little bit more than anticipated. We even got extra, so. But yeah, basically, that's all the trenching we're gonna do. No more trenching means we get to prepare for a fun night with some friends. Right back around, right here, right now. Both feet on the clouds, right back around. We can't slow us down. Till the sun goes out, bring it right down. This is the best place <laughs> Trampolines and pizza! Ooh, I'm dating a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> is it the best pizza you've ever had? Don't get ready too quick. You might want to take off your hat, drop your bag, maybe change out of your dress for a second. Boy, what are you doing? Come here. Are you ready to drive the excavator? Oh! Yeah! <laughs> you know Porter likes you in because I've been feeding him. <laughs> I'm confused already. Uh oh. Almost. Other way. Through your things. It's funny to see someone else in this because. I feel like because we've done it so much, excavated, it's like normal, but I forget how challenging it actually was to learn. And now it's like second nature, like riding a bike or walking. But when you put someone in here that hasn't done it, you're like, oh my goodness, let's come a long way. Oh my God, I can so see how you're like addicted to that. You're just like, so funny. Excavator rides turned into hot tubs and delicious meals turned into late night talks. With our friends Tal and Mads, there is no shortage of laughs to be had. The next day, we welcomed more friends and family to celebrate the end of summer. Let's just say it got pretty wild. <laughs> Crystal actually, her eyes are a little watery. I thought so. Yours aren't? <laughs> Bye, oh, I love, love you. you. What an amazing feeling to have all of our friends and family here and host them. Not them all. We got more friends. Yeah. And more family. <laughs> We'd love to have everyone. They're gonna get mad. <laughs> Fishing Momager. She wasn't even invited. Thank you to all of those that did come. And this is exactly how we envisioned this space. A place to host and to share. Share everything that we've created. And although we're not quite at the finishing stages, it's nice to have everyone here for the in-betweens. Yeah, I like that they get to see it at all the stages. Me too. Because next year, 2023, Summer bash. September weekend. It always gets better. See you Sunday. Ciao pack. Love you. Now, once again, we would like to thank you for watching our top three videos for how to start living off the grid with no money. Hit that like button and that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Also, remember that we have links below in the video description that will take you to the official page that you see here for the self sufficient backyard official website for getting off the grid and turning your home into a self-sufficient homestead and more information as well that is also featured in the beginning and at the end of the video and you can see that this featured information is said to be the only book you need to become self-sufficient on one quarter acres just take a look as we briefly scroll also take a look here 
as you can see that there is a video featured on the official page that should be able to show more information and help you to understand better. Also, take a look here as it says that this is said to contain 40 years of experience living off the grid and is said to help you to turn your home into a self-sufficient homestead. Just take a look as we briefly scroll through. Just click on the links provided in the description to see more on the feature The Self-Sufficient Backyard, program that teaches you how to get off the grid and make your home self-sufficient for yourself.